We are being visited routinely by these things that since 1947 we've called UFOs. Well, some people believe in UFOs, others don't. But did you know just about an hour west of Spokane in Harrington, there is a National UFO Reporting Center. Crem 2 photojournalist Dave Summers sat down with the organization's longtime director. Yeah, I had no idea what it was. All I saw was something just, whoosh, just go real fast. Well, we saw it right through the trees. Kind of approached from over that direction. Like six bright orange color lights. But there's two of them. No, no, no. There's One, three two, all three, together, four. right? No, it's four, four now. This big illuminated form. Then it took off at a high rate of speed. It's like vibrating lights. Oh, Mind that it. flickered pretty bright, too. There was something that was in the air. It was something that I'd never seen before. Are we alone in this galaxy or are we not? And there was anybody at sun, uh, above us that passed us like 30 seconds ago? There was someone pop a golf negative. Okay. Oh, this. A UFO. Yeah. My name is Peter Davenport and I'm the director of the National UFO Reporting Center in, based in Harrington, Washington. It's a position I've occupied for the last 25 years. We are being visited routinely by these things that since 1947 we've called UFOs. This is what one of the objects that passed over Phoenix on the 13th of March 1997 looked like. It was immense and it was hovering motionless over the witnesses. If this is true, if there's even a shard of a possibility that this is true, it is the biggest scientific question that has ever confronted mankind. in UFO work when I was very young, probably six years of age, I estimate it was, I saw a UFO on the outskirts of the St. Louis airport, seen by hundreds, possibly thousands of other people. Even though that was, I believe, 1954, probably July or August, that the image of that object remains imprinted on my brain clearly, indelibly. The entire sky turned really light colored blue. A big ball of white light and behind it was like this orange flame stuff. And it just shot across the sky like really fast and then all of a sudden it disappeared. One of the many interesting facets of UFO work is that so few people report them. Now they'll talk to their bartender, they'll talk to the taxi driver about that strange set of lights they saw when they were a kid. but. The most difficult part of my work is trying to convince people that in order for that information to do any good, they've got to write it down and make a permanent record of it. So look at that thing. It's rotating. What worries me even more than the presumed aliens themselves is the fact that our government is not sharing that information with the American people. This is wrong, in my opinion. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. The press is not pushing them. The press is not bringing this subject to their listeners and their viewers more frequently than is the case. That's one of the many reasons that I continue doing the work I do. to a reasonable question, how long will I do it, is I will do it as long as I have breath in my lungs and have a desire to continue doing it. There's no pay in it. There's just satisfaction of doing a job and doing it well, as well as I can. Uh, this is very important information. It has to do with future events. We have to know whether we are being visited, whether we're under threat, whether there are good aliens and bad aliens. These are all questions we have to answer. And the first step is in that process is collecting data, collecting data 
which is as accurate and reliable and trustworthy as we can possibly do. It's not nearly good enough yet to satisfy me, but I will continue working in this capacity until there's some resolution to the question or until they carry me out on a saucer with my boots on.